I've been working many years now, and I get introduced to art through dreams. I mean, I used to do a little art in primary school and people teacher days and whatnot. But I get to understand, I get to become an artist through dreams. And when I was around 19 years, I, I got what I call a mystical um, initiation, whereby I get to understand that, man, I am more than flesh and bones. Your, your life, your whole life is work. And um, if you happen to be a person who produces paintings or works of art, well then, that is part of your life. So work and life are sort of pretty, um, are pretty closely related as far as I'm concerned. I see my painting in terms of being bits, bits of life, just little bits of life. Because I, I really don't think I'm, I can say my painting is about life because life is so complex. So many things about life. My painting is just a little bit about life. I always wanted to be a painter. Yeah? And I don't care. I mean, if I, maybe if I was born in any other country, I would have still been a painter. Yeah? It doesn't matter where I am. I was born in Guyana. I am a Guyanese, okay? The paintings or the works that I produce are all based on lives, life and the myths. I consider myself to be an investigator and therefore I, I, must, I must pursue lines that I'm seeing, lines of development. I often use the, the analogy of the pork knocker, you know, uh, in Guyana. If, if you're out looking for gold, um, you, you, follow, you follow traces of things and you, you're prepared to go off a tangent and you're prepared to explore and move off in, in any direction at any given time. Uh, you know, all, all the points of the compass are, are available to you. And I feel that the same must hold true for the artist. As uh, far so as my painting is concerned, um, figures. I, I'm still interested in what I see happening on the streets. Um, the strange conjunctions that you see. When I'm doing my work, I use certain amount of will force, certain amount of mental contact. And when I, I feel that some of that is passed on onto the, work my, onto the work. But why my work is so filled with symbolism is just because presently in the third world, Indian and African people, Amerindian people, uh, Latin American people, are, were, were actually dominated by European um, people. And reading European history, you get to understand that they felt that because the African man had imagery and symbolism, the man was an Eden. And, in, and, and eat because they said they eat in their blind, blindness bowed down to wood and stone. Therefore, I said, I will study the symbolism of all the different religions and try to equate some, bring some unison among them that I can put new meanings to old mythologies. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's why you see I put so much um, symbolism in the 1763 monument to set people to think.
kind of myths I'm dealing with a garden. I like gardens. Mm -hmm. The garden is an um, essential part of our life. All of us have this instinct for refuge, rest, um, relaxation. And so in that sense, since I'm dealing with gardens, and the botanic gardens in particular, I'm dealing with a very primeval, a primeval urge which man has, the instinct to get away, to escape. You're, you feel oppressed, you feel harried by everyday life, mm -hmm. the hustle and bustle, and you want to go and enjoy peace and serenity, or what is seemingly peace and serenity. You remember the gardens and what, and what, what it's like in there. And right at the gate, there is a soldier with a machine gun, and he gives you a sort of jolt, a shock. I paint images that are, or stories that are Guyanese. And it's not only because I paint these stories or images that are Guyanese, I must say that they are, that my paintings are Guyanese paintings. Because, I mean, the language that I use, the main fact that I'm a painter, mm -hmm. or I would call myself a painter, is sort of universal, yeah? Because I use paint that come from England, maybe US. But the images that I use are me. In 1972, I did a painting that I call the painting. The painting was titled The Image, Old House Number One. Yeah. And from since then on, I've created the uh, Mm, maybe 20 or 25 more of those same images which are based on the Georgetown, old uh, Georgian type of uh, building, you know, the building that now or maybe in another couple of years or, you know, by the ending of the century would not be around for too long, okay? So I feel that in a small way, you know, I'm no, I'm no art historian in any way, but I just love this building, you know, I just look upon this building as being very romantic, you know. I think I'm a romantic cow in the sense that this building, I mean, they affect me that much. So I feel that I must uh, not really restore them or, but I just sort of feel that, like, okay, that I must put them or put them together with a story, with the stories that goes with them. I have here the picture of, of um, a man uh, in a garden. Uh, he's armed with a cutlass. Overall intention, of course, is, is not only to portray a certain theme, but also to do it in, in a visually exciting manner, because that is a particular domain 
um, of the artist that you, you are making a visual presentation and therefore the work must contain certain uh, uh, visual excitements in order to hold the interest um, of the onlooker. Um, I would not go into to more detail as to uh, um, an explanation of, of the symbols and the relationship of the symbols which are seen here because that I feel is, is up to the, to the viewer. The viewer is attracted by the configurations of colors and forms and then they begin to read things into the picture. What you read in the picture, picture of course will depend on your own personal experiences as an individual. But I think the overall uh, symbology is there of a man in a garden and what is possible what are possibly possible lines of action as concerns a man in a garden with um, a sharp edged implement. I've been asked about um, the black sun and, and this is something that I cannot give any definite answers to. It's, it's an intuitive um, kind of response to the idea of uh, sun, uh, sun in, in the sky. Um, because I've been asked that question, I have been thinking of things like the, the phenomenon of the, the black hole in space. And when I read about that, I, I find there are a lot of um, uh, strange implications about existence. And of course, that will lead you into the area of, um, of philosophy inevitably. Um, what is going on where and why and, and what implications uh, are these things um, have for you? Every part of this painting was actually done through what I call psycho dream command. I get something like a little sleep fell on me and I see the pattern, the color and everything on this until I finish this painting. And why I call it so important because the head, the tail of the serpent is the head of the dove. The head of the dove here stands for purity, love and simplicity and as you go upward the powers of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding come down upon you. So P Pablo Picasso painted the peace dog, a white dog with an olive branch in his mouth. Mm -hmm. But since then we had about a thousand wars. But peace shall not come not until man can combine the elements of wisdom, I mean love, purity, simplicity, with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And you have to work your way like the wriggling movements of the serpent. It's not something going to drop on your lap because you get a little food to eat. Uh, you think peace in that. And many people feel because they enjoy a little bit of political peace is peace. No, well, maybe, maybe many wars going on. Hunger, ignorance, and all these different things like that. It's about people, people in Georgetown, people of the, of the city that normally um, People don't really look at. They look at, but they don't see. The beggars in the streets, you know, the people that sleep on the piers in the night. You call them night walkers or street walkers or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I see these people every night, every day. I'm trying to create or to place these people against a fence, against a fence that. Because it is what really they are. They cannot go further than where they are, you know. They, in the night you see them just bracing against the wall as if they want to get into the shop or get into the building that they really fix themselves or try to sleep.
I, I've been working with figures um, over the last few years, and, and then I, I say suddenly it might not be that because uh, perhaps there was a gradual transition. Um, suddenly, I find myself doing uh, compositions based on a theme uh, of hearts and diamonds. Um, I, I'm not considering the symbolic implications of hearts or the symbolic implications of diamonds, um, but what I, I find myself doing is using those two particular shapes uh, in order to produce uh, paintings. Um, in this instance, uh, the theme of this painting is, is hearts and diamonds ascending. And, um, I have two forms, uh, two shapes here, which could be seen, say, as feet. I, I think of the story in, in the Bible of Christ on the cross. I, I think of the heart and the diamonds here as being the nails which were pushed uh, through his feet. Uh, he is in ascendancy, hearts and diamonds in ascendant, ascending rather. Uh, he is in ascendancy over uh, the, the, the world. And of course, the world itself contains um, a heart in its, uh, in its center. But what for me has been even more um, interesting and curious is um, what goes on at the areas where you have an edge. Loosely speaking, we say a line, but it's not a line, it's an edge. Again, this manipulation of, of tones of color, light tones against, um, against dark tones. Um, I, I find that it makes, it makes the, the pictures become a little lighter in, in intensity because you do not have the hard uh, uh, black outlines to them. But then um, the use of these edges has led me in, into other areas of thinking. And I, I am thinking about um, horizons. I am thinking about edges. This is the third one which I painted. And um, in this one, even though the soldier is not very um, apparent, he's sort of camouflaged here in the background. Nevertheless, he's here. And um, I think, um, I'm saying that um, the soldier is part of a reality. He's not. He doesn't seem very significant or very frontal, but um, his, he's nevertheless there. And the thing is, I just happen to have the birds there. Life is going on. The drama of life continues, right? Mm -hmm. Blossoming. The birds flying. Some of them are flying out, obviously. Um, the, the leaves are falling. The petals are falling. Life goes on. Dra the drama of everyday life. Right, and every little life is more important. And that goes on despite the presence of the man. And that is what happens. He's not so very obvious, he's not very conspicuous. But in life, things have to go on. Life, death and birth, important things in life go on despite the presence of that man. He is, a, he is intrusive, but he's there and he's camouflaged. This painting is a part of my jungle, the jungle that I was talking about earlier and the jungle that I have created in my uh, subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the title of it is Chiril, or Chirilina, or Chiril. In yeah, any case, it's, uh, it's kind of Indian, the, the other part of it, which is um, story. Matter of fact, I got the story from listening to people talk about the, the spirit, the sterile spirit that lives among trees, dwells in the home and houses, the, uh, sometimes protects the young, sometimes protects the pregnant woman. You know? Maybe it's an evil spirit, sometimes it's a good spirit, sometimes it's a bad spirit, evil. I mean, uh, all, I wanted, all I had wanted to do was just to paint this just to produce a painting, which I could say, okay, right. Looks like the thing that looks like the story. This is the first painting that I did uh, when I went to the United States. First professional prime canvas I ever worked on. And um, it was a joy, and I had to meditate months to know what would I have put on the, on, on the canvas. 
And then I was so alarmed over the bridges in the United States of America. So I say I'm going to do a, a painting and call it Brooklyn Bridge. But it will carry a little bit of messages, uh, messages as I generally do in, the, um, in my paintings. Therefore, you find that the structure of the bridge is made up of people. Some are under the bridge and some are become the bridge and some support the roads. Bridges have a kind of symbolic meaning to, to me. I mean, putting a bridge over a trench to cross from one part of, uh, of the land to the other part of the land, it seems as if when man meets problems in life, he, he has to think and he has his focus to start to, you know, go, I mean, to master hurdles or jump over hurdles. So building bridges, um, whether tunnels under the sea or above the sea, it is actually man trying to, to master his environment and master his problems in life. Apart from being an artist, you have to be a human being and simply civilized human being try to raise a family and live somewhere and I don't separate myself from the, from the working class people, the farmer. I see myself because as a role in the community because I understand myself actually as a manifestation of God in a human form and uh, although I'm a wood carver, I have a quarter acre land in my backyard in the quarantine, I do my farming. I plant rice, I do farm and you live like, just like an ordinary rice farmer, encourage them to work honestly because I feel when God told Adam and Eve from the sweat of their brow, they shall eat bread. He told them too, from the um, craftiness of their minds, they can build gardens even better than Eden. And by the meditations of their heart, they can be in attunement with him. But if they said that we were born to be underneath the, uh, other, um, the, the breadfruit tree and wait for the breadfruit to drop in your mouth and you call it Eden or heaven. I don't think like that. I glad, I, I glad Adam, Adam ate the forbidden fruit for us, learn to work and invent. You understand? Doing a painting is always like um, an adventure. You start out in a given direction and then you find that you begin to veer a little off the path and you come back on, you lose your way, uh, you find your way and at the end of it you, you hope that you've achieved something of significance. Through work I feel that there is a discovery about some of the mysteries. Um, you discover the mysteries, not necessarily the answers to the mysteries, uh, some of the mysteries about what living is all about. And um, that I feel is, is the most important thing as far as my own work is concerned. So it's a question of what I find for myself through, uh, through what I am doing. Um, of course, by, by producing things, you're also allowing other people to participate um, in what you're doing.